I did it. You guys didn't see it, but I did it. I did it, and you guys didn't even see it. I did it. She I, did it. I fixed it. I fixed she, it. in fact, did it. And you'll never know what wasn't fixed, but the second we went live, I fixed it. Um, happy Friday. Happy Veterans Day for our U.S. alphas and, and those who served. Mm -hmm. happy, happy Veterans Day, Mr. Moore. He got a free donut today because mm -hmm. he's a good boy. That's right. He's a good America boy. Good America good boys. Good America boy. Good America boys get good boy donuts at Dunkin' Donut today. Sure um, do. Probably all the probably most of the places will do free donuts. All the donut places. Pretty much everywhere does free food. Yeah. That's why we don't go out to eat on Veterans Day. Yeah. He's he, <laughs> he is a veteran, but uh, there's really no uh it's in our area we're right next to a base so there's no thanks yeah if you you can get a free plate of nachos if you're, if you're willing. willing to wait for an hour and a half in line <laughs> and we are no right. thank you um but happy friday guys every year i like to do a marketing inspiration episode and today what i really want to do is look through a couple accounts of We've got some handmade alpha academy students who submitted their accounts i found a couple other just etsy sellers that i've followed over the years that have really really eye-catching accounts um and then i've got a couple bigger brands who i just really admire their marketing who i'm going to share with you guys today because right now is really that time that we want to game up our marketing for Cyber Week, it's coming up, guys. And, and you can't just start marketing during Cyber Week and expect there to be momentum. You have to encourage that engagement and comments and, and you know, really, really get that eye-catching content out there. In fact, you guys should have started doing that last month. Um, but, you know, if you're late to the party, that's fine. There's no time like the present, but start now. Now, if you're new to Instagram and assuming that you didn't take our uh, Alpha Holiday Boot Camp in October... Um, make sure that you click the links down below in the video description. Somewhere down there, my free 30-day Instagram challenge kit is, is linked. Go grab that because, yeah, we don't have 30 days until Black Friday, but it's still going to help you to build a constant posting schedule so that you can make sure that you are maintaining your marketing when it matters most, which is right now. Even if you don't plan to host a sale, you have to prepare for that increase in traffic. If we know that... On Black Friday, there are going to be historically more Etsy shoppers on Etsy than any other day of the year. Why not optimize for that traffic? You know, if, if these shoppers are going through their, you know, all of their family members and doing all of their shopping, they're ready to nail it out. They got their leftover pie and their coffee from Thanksgiving. They're ready to finish their Christmas shopping. They're not going to not buy something that they want just because it's not on sale. You know what I mean? If they find the perfect gift in your shop and, you know, for whatever reason you're not hosting a sale, it's still very likely that they're going to buy that item if it is the perfect match for what they're looking for. However, I do recommend running a sale just because it's Black Friday. If, if there was ever a day to run one, definitely do that. Um, but today, Tina, what? Tina, it sounds like you need to refresh. Oh. Sound, I believe that happened to you last week or the week before, too. Uh-oh. Um... <clears throat> Yeah, let me know if I'm sounding you sound picky. Fine. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, re regardless, guys, right now is the time to be marketing. And and that goes with any platform. Obviously, when it comes to platforms like Pinterest, it's not so much about the recency as it is to build evergreen content that can perpetually do well. Um, I wouldn't post on Pinterest about, you know, a one day only Black Friday sale or or something like that. Um, but platforms like your Facebook pages, eh, you know, Facebook does okay. Uh, but Instagram primarily, TikTok especially, um, doing short form video content. These are all places where you can really get your product out there. So um, with Instagram obviously being my favorite platform for marketing, uh, TikTok being my close second, that's what we're going to focus on today is uh, Instagram marketing. I do want to say that for Handmade Alpha Academy students, I know I posted, what, yesterday or the day before in the group asking for your guys' Instagram accounts. I had to really prune down my list. And there were a couple things I did. I didn't want to only pick people that I picked last year. Um, so there is a chance if you submitted last year, you weren't picked this year. If you were picked this year and you were already featured last year, it might mean that I simply forgot that I featured you. <laughs> or... It means that your account was so stinking amazing that I felt that no, I had to share it no matter what. So 
Um, don't feel like your account is like inferior or that it didn't meet my criteria. It was really just making sure that we trimmed down enough so that we could cover everybody and still have time for questions from you guys at the end. Um, yeah, other than that, guys, keep in mind that my coaching program, Handmade Alpha Academy, that I keep talking about, that's going to be opening on December 1st through the 10th for enrollment. So, yeah, don't put the S in there. Yeah, I know. It doesn't, doesn't work if you do. Yeah, there is a uh, there is a link that he's going to pop in there if you want to learn more about that program, and we're happy to answer questions about it at the end. But, um, Mr. Moore, if you're ready to... There you go. Yeah, let's configure it. I did not realize that we were both wearing, like, off-white. Let me go today. change. Yeah, I want you to go change. I don't like it. I also you... didn't realize my mustache was messed up when we started. Oh, didn't no. Anything. I didn't notice. Okay, I love you. What's messed up about it? It's not now. I fixed it. Oh. It was like exploded. Oh, like the, um, mm -hmm. what's the dude from Sonic? You know. Sonic. San San no, the, the bad guy. What's, what's the bad guy? The, you know what I mean? You guys. Yeah, Eggman. Pew, 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 pew. Eggman. That's you. You are the. That's his name. I know. But you are the egg man. You guys ready? All right. You let's... ready? Is this the first one? Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. It doesn't matter what order they're in. Oh, oh okay. Okay. Um, Kat, so bright. I think I, I actually did feature Kat last year, but her holiday marketing is so cute. I can't I can't not feature her again. Um, First of all, she recently had her products uh, put in Dollywood, which is a huge accomplishment and something that is definitely going to... Um, help her to stand out against her competitors. She creates beautiful flower crowns and some of her marketing, for example, this piece, it looks Christmassy, even though it's not, she's not out standing with a Christmas tree. It's not snowing. Still but, got that feel though. Right, the color palette here feels very Christmassy. And one of the things I love is that she actually models her own products. But let's go down and look at a couple of these really, really cute marketing photos that she has for the holidays. I mean, these are so cute. I'm curious, are these customers' uh, photos that they have sent to you, or do you do photo shoots? This right here, this reel, is the reason that I chose to feature her. I watched this, and I was like, I... I That's amazing. Is that not the best thing that you've seen today? Is it's that... It's like one of those plastic pots from the hardware store. That is the greatest thing that I have ever seen. That is a wonderful idea. I love it. Um, that's amazing. Amazing way to feature your product. How many? Yeah, that is that is so cute. That needs more, more, more views, yeah, more exposure. Yeah, screw a cake smash, dude. Start doing that. Yeah. That's yeah. wonderful. Um, but her <laughs> holiday marketing is so clean. It, it is so pristine. I love that she doesn't overcrowd her imagery um, unnecessarily. For example, this piece here. You don't need a Christmas tree in the background. You don't need a bunch of colorful reindeer in the background. You can clearly get a good Christmas feel just from the product itself. And that really, really subtle, um, it looks like some type of platform that she has placed her products on. Like a, oh, it's a cake stand, like a small cake stand. Her photos are just so nice. So um, you can follow her over at The Pearled Rose. I'm, I've just been excited to follow her journey. She's been one of our Handmade Alpha Academy students for several years. Um, she has made some major accomplishments over the last year with getting into Dollywood for her brand. Anybody who, you know, lives in the Gatlinburg area, we used to go there quite frequently, mm -hmm. but um, you know what an accomplishment that is. So definitely check her out. Love her products. Love her Etsy shop. All right. Uh, we can next. 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 Speed round. If it, we, if it seems like we're going through them, we have like, what, 20 to go through? Yeah, we've got a bunch. All right. Let's do it. Mm. Miranda, thank I Thank you for the donation. A hundred bucks. Oh, thank you, Lydia. Make sure that you guys check out our uh, our charity for St. Jude's Children's Hospital for the holidays. Now's the time to do it. Yes, we've got $3,300 that you guys have raised for St. Jude. So we truly, truly ap appreciate it. That money goes straight to them. We don't see a penny of it. So please consider donating. We will be running that charity until, uh, until after the holidays. And then we'll pick a different charity. But all right. Heading over to Miranda's account. Miranda, you because we're in the same niche with both my new shop that I run with Michelle, um, and you obviously do bookmarks because we are both in that bookish niche, you are the account that I think that I look at the most. Um, I, I wish that my account looked as good as yours. Your account is so beautiful. 
She has nailed the mood of cozying up with your candle, reading. You've got your cool bookmark. She has an amazing bookshelf background. Um, she she just has the, I don't know, she compiles her photos so well. And the use of her props, it's just amazing what she does. Another thing that I also notice is you never catch her with nasty nails while she's taking pictures of her product photos. Yeah, clean your fingernails. She has <laughs> the best nails when she does her product photos. Like, I am guilty of taking some... I've seen some pretty jank... Yeah, but the thing is, you know... You, I... You, I edited it out. So. Right. You, you, when you edited my product photos, you used to clean your fingernail, clean. nasty fingernails for you. Yeah. Yeah. But she, she creates an atmosphere. You can go into her shop and know exactly who her target customers are. And that's so important. Um, there are a lot of bookish themed shops out there for example, or, or big brands, I guess you could say, like the Bookish Box and Lit Joy Crate and Fairy Loot, um, that all kind of have this particular aesthetic. What I really like about Miranda's Instagram account is that she uses a very similar filter to ensure that everything is perfectly cohesive. Um, I don't know. Do you use like a Lightroom preset or... How do you edit your photos? I'm just curious because it, it feels like you have you don't have to tell me the name of it. Keep that proprietary. But it feels very much like you've selected what your preset is going to be and you just remain consistent with it. And I mean, obviously, there needs to be a little bit of skill in how you actually choreograph your photos and how you lay out your props and how you balance everything. But that on top of a really, really great filter that makes those images look cohesive, I think that it really makes your brand stand out uh, she said the coco video is viral on tiktok with 18 million views <gasps> on one and over 7 million on another from the same photo shoot that is amazing the baby in the coco capital capitalize on that traffic for sure that is all i wonder why it did so dang well on tiktok and so i mean it didn't do because bad. it's unique that was a really unique idea yeah but instagram did like you come up with that idea or did you see somebody else doing it i've seen other shoots like on instagram with the babies and the coco it uh, was just with the flower crown and all the props it was just so good yeah um, it was pro tier but anyway Miranda again I, I just I think that you have really really mastered your aesthetic and I oh that is that is an awesome book cover <laughs> I, I love it. And I love how you can tie in themes without infringing on copyright. You can choose, you know, general themes like dragons that that already fit your niche. So I love it. Obviously, I love it because I keep raving about it. I look at your account all the time. Every time I see it pop up in my own feed, I'm I'm always stalking you. Um, but yeah, okay. I think we're good. Yes, Lightroom. That's what I thought. I figured I need to find us a good filter. I've just kind of been. We have Lightroom. I know. I need. I need to. This one should come. We've as... got the the full Adobe suite. Yeah. This one should come as no surprise. Miranda he said, "Doctor Eggman." He didn't go to all that school for nothing. That's amazing. Okay, well, I'm just going to call him Eggman. <laughs> that, that's, that comment wins the <laughs> chat for the day. You win. I don't know what you win, but you win. All right. Mabel the Woodle, probably one of my favorite student at, or student accounts, simply because no matter what she posts, I know exactly whose account it is. Her branding, the mm -hmm. cohesion, the amazing, like, just brand imagery, the dog obviously. Um, she's got great follower numbers. 13,000 followers is fantastic. But not only does she post product, 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 she adds a lot of value and fun to her posts. And she always incorporates her dog in. I love how she edits her photos. I love that her dog is always included. She gets great engagement on, on her posts. Um, mm -hmm. Overall, I think that she does a fantastic job of balancing products with the interests of her niche. For example, I saw this one a few uh, a few days ago, and I thought that this was really, really cute. It's not selling anything. It's not pushing products, but it ties in the theme of her niche, which is doodles, right? So very, very cute. Um, anytime I see one of her posts... I know exactly who it is. She uses really fun pops of color. She uses very, very consistent um, themes with all of her posts. Again, I just, I always know what 
whose posts I'm seeing when they pop up in my feed. So very, very cute. Um, keep chugging along because I think that you have just the cutest account. All right. Mm -mm -mm. Right back into it. Right back in. So the sun recipe. So this is the coolest process that I had never heard of until she joined HAA. Is it botanical cyanotype? Is that how you pronounce it? Sure. Anyway, all of her products are made by the sun. Um, they are all, I, I'm assuming that it's a product of er, sun super, bleaching out the products. I don't know, but it's super cool. All of her products follow <laughs> a blue color palette. They might have to. Yeah, that's that's what I'm assuming. Here we go. Check it out. Check it out. These fern leaves traveled across the ocean with me. That is just so cool. She makes such unique products and she's not... She's not just selling cool prints. She's selling the process. You don't buy one of her products just to have the cool print. You buy it with the knowledge that it was made using real plants in this really cool process that, like I said, I had never even heard of until... I neither. That's pretty cool. Yeah. she, she And she's getting so good with her marketing. Is it like... Is it like photo film and you're putting the stuff on it to block out the sun from the areas you don't want to turn blue? Is that how it works? I think so. Is I it like a type of like actual photo film? That's interesting. I think so. And I believe that, yeah, starting here, I think that either she messaged me or we critiqued her shop. I can't remember. Um, but I told her that, you know, getting a little bit more cohesive with it. And I feel like she's made some major improvements because now it's it's like the color palette is always blue. Um, it just feels so uniform and so fun. And I love that she shares the process that she utilizes to create her products. Um, and I love that she's not afraid to show her face either because, you know, that is that is just such a great trust element to know exactly who you're buying from. I can even imagine her with her cool hat sitting outside. You know, maybe she's picking some cool flowers that she's going to use for her next print. I love it. And I think that she does a really good job of uh, maintaining that overall brand consistency. This wasn't a case of holiday marketing per se, but I think that it was a really great example of a brand that creates a very cohesive image and also has a story behind their products. So they're not just selling the items themselves. She's selling her process, which is, is great. Everybody loves a story behind a product. All right. Next one. Ooh, we got to be careful with this one. I already checked. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Mel, she didn't submit her shop, but I wanted to feature her. I, I try to feature her as much as I can just because she is such a shop to idolize. Uh, 12,000 followers. We've got a great interview on my channel. Um, oh, man. When what? That was last, not last June, but the June before last, that enrollment period, we did her interview. Yeah. And she talked about what it truly means to be a six figure brand. And at the time, she was still a nurse and she was making enough money to quit her job, but she just wanted to maintain that little bit of, you know, security. So I'm, I'm curious if she's still doing that. But her photos. I hope, not. I hope she's focused more primarily on her business because she was also in the in the midst of I think buying a brewery. Remember? She was working. Yeah, she was helping with a brewery as well. Um, I don't know if she was buying it. <laughs> Let or us know if, if you're here. You're probably too busy to be here. I was but. gonna say she's a busy one, but she is one of our iconic Handmade Alpha Academy students. I think that most of you guys, if you've been following my channel for a while, you've probably seen her at some point. I love her product photos. I think that she does the cutest photo shoots. She's not afraid to show off her personality and that shines through her products because often her products are a little bit snarkier. You might remember in the interview, if you watched it, that we talked about some of her more um, phallic uh, candles. So I yeah, don't- she had some more adult candles. I wonder if she's switching because Miranda said, is this the seller Etsy keeps putting in their commercials? Um, they did put her in one of their commercials. Yes, they they did for Halloween. They showcased one of her uh one of her candles last year. Yeah, it looks like she's focusing more on holiday can. Which I mean, you know, smart move though. Well, these are the products that have always done really well. It's also Instagram, so yeah, she probably is a little more limited on what she can put on here. Yeah, 
she 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 definitely um makes a lot of her sales during the holiday time or during Halloween just because she has some great spooky themed products. But I think that she does a fantastic job, you know, just with her imagery and with the overall vibe of her product. This image here is probably one of my very favorites. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a cool candle. Super cute. Should make a whole like birthday cake candle, like the whole thing. The whole oh, you thought the whole cake was a candle? Yeah. But yeah, this would be a really cool idea for a candle. There is a naked lady there. Oh, is there? Yeah, there's it's it's, it's fine. Um it's education. Right. Just it's just nurples, guys. It's kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but she she does a lot of really cute things. And I really love that one of the things we covered in her interview is that she did her naked lady candles, but she did all different skin types. And then she started doing plus size as well. And I just thought that that was so cute. I love that she's very inclusive with how she creates her products. Um, and that was, I believe at the time, was her best-selling product were her female candles. And now I'm wondering if they... If they still are, I might have to I might have to check in with her and see how she's been doing. Sure. All right. You don't like to bug students too much. Yeah, I try not to bug. Um, all right. So you've pro oh God, what is her name? What is her name? I don't bother to try to remember names anymore. I can't. There's too many people. <sighs> I can't remember. I remember YouTube tags. She's, other than people we directly work with frequently. She's super close friends with Melanie from Drop Dead Candles. And Melanie actually, like, insisted that she join HAA. Either way. Does, do you guys remember what? Tina, do you remember her name? I can't remember her name offhand. I feel so bad. Anyway. Her shop. Her. What is, what is your name? I can't remember your name. Amanda. Amanda. That's right. Okay, so Amanda has, like, her 80s and 90s aesthetic down pat. I love the overall aesthetic of her brand. She has done so much in the time that she's been in Handmade Alpha Academy. It, it has been a night and day difference watching her brand evolve. How fun is this? And, and it's all just so cute and colorful. I mean, it fits the current trends. I absolutely love it. And I think that she just gets better. Every time I look at her account, it's even more like it's got that trippy, really, really fun, you know, really, really fun retro feel. And her whole look at her outfit like she just <laughs> fits her, her brand. She fits the vibe. Um, she's one of those brands that I think she she fully embraces what she does. Her aesthetic lines up with her products. Really, really fun person to watch. So if you guys um, want to follow, I always just say night moves. Night night moves. Uh, atelier. At, is that what it is? Yes. Atelier. 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 All, all uh, atelier. <laughs> Quesadilla. I'm pretty I, sure that's the name for a shop. But either way, super fun brand. Looks like she was, oh, she was featured in BuzzFeed. Is that BuzzFeed? Is that what that is? Yes. She was featured in BuzzFeed. That's awesome. That's amazing. I hope that she has that all over her like Etsy banner and stuff. All right. All right. Hana. Hana from Distant Planet is another one that we talk about a lot because I think that she is a fantastic example of a print-on-demand business who you would never know is print-on-demand because she does it so freaking well. She orders all of her products and she models them. She is the face of her brand. Um, and her designs are really, really cool. These are all her original designs that she creates. Um, I, I just, I love that she takes all of her own product photos and she's such a fun person and you can really see it through her products and her designs. She's not shy at all to be on camera and actually showcase those products. So she is a POD seller. Obviously it does get expensive to order your samples. However, they're a tax write-off. Um, and I talked to Pam about it in the UK. She said it's the same way there. So I think that this is a really great representation of how products are actually going to fit. You know, on, on a mock-up, it's almost like the most pristine version of a product. I prefer to see the product, you know, she's got it a little, it looks a little worn, you know, it, it's got some wrinkles. She's rolled up the sleeves. It feels like she... It's natchy. Right, it's natural. 
it feels like something that she's actually putting on and, and wearing herself, which gives me confidence to buy her products. Because I'm like, well, if she wears them, then clearly they're nice. So again, not a lot of holiday marketing going on. Um, you know, it's not like she's got super cool Christmas products, <laughs> but I think that she does a fantastic job of really standing out to her target audience. She has really, really cute designs. And um, like I said, when it comes to print on demand, I think that making those big moves for your brand to take some of those product photos yourself, even if it takes time, that's about where we are with our shop. You know, most of the time we take our own product photos, but um, sometimes we do have to rely on mock-ups. Slowly transitioning into that, though, I think is is great. If you can purchase those products, definitely try to do that. All right. All right. And then we've got Ani again. And and by the way, um, uh, last shop, um, Hana, she's got an interview on our channel about print on demand. If you want to go back and watch that, and Ani, yeah, that was a fun interview. Yeah, <laughs> Ani also has an interview on our channel. Um, where she talks about getting featured by Etsy and the things that she's done over the years to actually get featured in Etsy articles. So all very valuable interviews that we did, I think, a year and a half ago. Definitely go check them out. She has the cutest product. It, it reminds me of Pottery Barn. Um, I absolutely love her product photos. She is one of Christina Nicole's students at what, as well. Um, and, you know, HAA students, you guys also get uh, Christina Nicole's Product Photography Essentials Workshop for free. If you haven't checked that out and you're in Handmade Alpha Academy, be sure to go get that out of the bonuses vault because this is exactly the type of stuff that Christina Nicole teaches. Um, but I think that she does a fantastic job with her holiday marketing. Again, not, not being too over the top with all the Christmas stuff, but very, very subtle elements to make things feel really, really fun. Super, super cute. Tina said, I wish I had my own kiln. There's actually some pretty good YouTube videos on how to make them yourself for relatively cheap. Yeah, we were looking into it as well. Mm -hmm. But she has such a great, a great eye for her photos and her brand. I love that she also adds her process look at that little ghost so cute cute overall it's just so cohesive like i said it's that it's that pottery barn aesthetic you know it's it's that overall appearance of everything fitting everything feeling like it goes together in such a perfect way like it all belongs together i love i love that she posts these videos as well but if you guys want to check her out, that's going to be Magpie Mischief on Instagram. Um, yeah, I, she's she's definitely one that I've got my eye on for the holidays because it feels like something your grandma would absolutely yeah. love. All right. I think that this might be second to last Handmade Alpha Academy student, and then we're going to go into some other brands. Hello. Oh, oh, it's already up. It is already up. All right. Um, is it Wilhelm? Wilhelm and Friends. Wilhelm and Friends. First of all, awesome logo. That is a phenomenal logo. One thing that I really, really love about your page is the color cohesion where you've incorporated your dog in. The colors that I notice are brown, white, and blue. And as we go, and, and wood texture, so brown, white, and blue, look at the color cohesion as we scroll, even with the dogs. It's all so consistent and cohesive. It, it, I feel like I know, if this is your house, I feel like I know what your house smells like. I feel like it smells like coffee and leather. Super duper great photos, just an overall brand image. Again, this is another another shop, another Handmade Alpha Academy student where they have captured the mood and they've captured the aesthetic and they've captured the... Is this you? Is this what you look like? Jules? Are you Jules? I couldn't remember. Um, I, I kept saying they because I couldn't remember what your name was. But I absolutely love how you have just 
captured an entire feeling with the products that you create and balancing them with your own dog. Um, it's it's just so, I don't know. Where would where could I pick? I could picture your products in like a high, like a super high end clothing store, like one of the ones that you would see in New York City with like a window dis crazy window display for the holidays. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They're just they're just so cool, and it's relatively simple products. You know things like keychains and wallets. It's not like you're reinventing the wheel. You're just taking what you do and making sure that everything that you post aligns with that lifestyle or that image. So that's super cute. <laughs> is that a video? Oh, it is a video. I didn't know that. Oh my goodness. Please stick one on, but please stick one on him little head. That's what I want to see. Yes. Yes. That's what I wanted. All right. All right. Is I think is the next, no, there's, Two more, two more HAA students, and then we're going to get into some other ones. All right. Again, I cannot for the life of me remember your name. <clears throat> um, Fairy Tale Art Corner. You you are a newer Handmade Alpha Academy student, correct? I'm pretty sure that you are a newer Handmade Alpha Academy student. As I've I've kind of kept an eye on your progress. Let's let's take a scroll down actually because the cohesion and the overall brand image has it's gotten so much more like refined. Um let's like take a scroll 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 scroll. Okay, so we're kind of starting, let's see. 38 weeks. So we're we're towards, you know, towards the back here. But as we scroll up, I feel like it's almost like you are learning your brand more. You know what I mean? I can definitely see your photography skills getting better, but I feel like your actual lifestyle of your brand comes together the more that we scroll through your products. Um, I, I'm getting the vibe of the overall home that I could picture your products in if that makes sense. And then we start getting into these really creative like uses of shadow. Are those shadow or is it a print on there? I can't tell, it's just so good. It almost looks like that's on the paper. Really, really cool videos as well. Really neat. Wax holder or uh, ring holders. Yeah, I do think that it's the print on the paper. Mm -hmm. But overall, I just, I like pointing out when I see a good direction. And I really think that you are moving in an interesting direction. And I'm excited to continue following your brand even more. Um, but I don't think I've ever featured you. And I just wanted to make sure that we were doing that. Now, before you share this one, <laughs> she was like, I don't know if you're going to be able to share mine. Not any uh, inappropriate. It's all text. We yeah. can't go too far down. This is one that you guys will have to go explore on your own if you're feeling a little naughty, but I love her brand and it just feels, it's very authoritative. I'm intimidated by it. Uh, so littles, send your littles away if they can mm -hmm. read maybe, maybe. Just maybe. NSFW text. The yeah. products are great. Yeah, not, not, not safe for work coming up. Okay, not showing any, any, no, it's Instagram. We can't, there's only, we're pretty limited on what could be shown. Yeah, her, even her shop has been limited <laughs> on what she can post. But she is Kinky Ink, Kinky Ink Press. Uh, she creates BDSM uh, oriented planners, journals, games, wearables, card games. I get ads or uh, posts from her almost every single mm -hmm. day. She is, she posts pretty frequently and her she, posts are pretty good. Right. She is on it when it comes to her account. And what I really, really love is that. She makes sure that everything fits the black and white theme that she has with her brand. So I can't go down too far just because there's some, <laughs> some there's some words that I don't want to show, but I don't think we've ever been able to really showcase her channel, her channel, her account. I'll let you guys go explore on your own, but I really think that she does a phenomenal job in an industry that is really hard to advertise first and foremost, because I mean, 
you know, you have to be careful what you post. Otherwise, Instagram's algorithm is going to delete mm -hmm. your content or restrict it, right? There's that. And then there's the issue with finding your target audience when you are creating products like these. You know, you have to be able to find them. It's not like she's selling cute little candles or Christmas ornaments, right? What I love is that she's kept it very classy. I think that for her industry, she has kept it so clean, so classy, and and in a in a niche that I think is probably one of the most challenging to market within. Yeah, I think so too. And I think it's good to keep it kind of classy, especially with the particular genre that she's in. Right, like, right. You got it. People associate this kind of stuff with being gross when it's kind of exactly the opposite with most of these people. They're usually very clean and right very professional about how they do things right so definitely check it out you know check it check, check it out. out get yourself something for christmas um her cards are pretty cool you got you and you've you got a you got a sticker from her didn't you oh we can't say yeah, I've, what got, it, I've got it back there but you? i can't say it i've got no. two of them yeah yeah oh what'd you do what'd you break screw off with your stupid developer tools nobody cares <laughs> it's still on the screen Oh my God, <laughs> go away. All right, so the next one is not one of my students. I don't know who this is. This is just a really cute, um, in fact, are they Etsy? I don't even, I think that they're Etsy. Their shop is so cute and they sell, uh, they sell patterns, I believe. I believe toys and decor. Oh, they do have one for their patterns, it appears. It appears that they have an account specifically for patterns. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if they sell these complete or if they sell them as patterns, but her photos are, those are super cool. Look how beautiful these photos are, how beautifully balanced they are with how she's, you know, got her blurred background. Pattern. I, I mean, she has just done such an amazing job with these photos. Yeah, um, they are, they are patterns. Are they patterns? Yeah, okay. In the description. Got it. Got it. I mean, look at those. Look at those hearts. She has so much engagement. She'd be really smart to do the patterns for these and then auction the like the, the one of a kind originals. Yeah. I mean, these these photos are phenomenal. Look at that that use of natural light. I absolutely love. It. Is she is she Ukrainian? I'm not sure, but that's definitely Russian. Yeah, I'm not sure. Or similar. Russian or similar, we're not sure. I but don't want to pretend like I know the dialects over there. I love that she showcases where she works on her product. It's just it's there's an entire atmosphere. I know I keep saying that around all of these, but I purposefully chose brands that have amazing atmosphere. Um, it's just so cute, guys. This is a fun way to showcase if you sell patterns. Don't I, and I have people say that all the time, like, oh, I sell patterns. I can't I can't do an Instagram. Nobody wants to look at a picture of a pattern. Don't show the pattern. Show what they can make with it. Show what they can create. Show the finished product, because when they see it, they're going to think, wow, I, I want to make that. And you might even inspire them to learn how to create something of their own. So you might inspire them to take on knitting. You know, you never know. Seven more. All right. Let's hustle. Candle Dynasty, this one was really, really cool. Um, this is a shop from Germany. First of all, that's a really cool logo. Mm -hmm. I love mm -hmm. how cohesive the products are. And this seller clearly watches trending colors to create their products, which is why I, I chose them. They've got neutral Christmas. They've got all like warm pinks. They've got a balance of the neutrals and the pinks. The way that they photograph their products is just, it's so nice. And it almost tells you like what products you should buy together. Um, again, no crazy backgrounds, just, you know, some little bells, a little bit of snow. There's some little bells on the wicks of these candles. Nothing too over the top in terms of the props. Overall, though, I think that this is a very clean and, and share-worthy account. These are the types of shops that Etsy shares, that they share on their social media, that they share, you know, that they add editor's picks badges to. Um, it, again, this is another shop that it feels like a pottery barn. Mm -hmm. So very, very pretty. I like the hearts, too. Super duper nice. All right. 
Are you ready for the next one? Yes, I am. Just All making right. sure there was nobody at the front door. Oh, are we expecting a package? Yes, several. Was there somebody at the front door? I don't know. Oh. I haven't had a chance to check because you asked me if we were ready for the next one. Oh, okay. All right. So um, this one, her name is Katie. I see that now. She has so many followers. Um, again, not a Handmade Alpha Academy student, not an alpha, just somebody that I've stumbled across in my Etsy journeys. Her photos of her jewelry are so good. Not only is her jewelry good, but her product photos are good. I'll be right back. They're, These two. They are so bright and vibrant and and it it feels almost like a treasure trove as you start going through her products and like for example this is obviously her halloween marketing look at how she has paid attention to the seasonality it's not even necessarily that she's added a bunch of halloween elements but you see these colors together and that little skull and and you just kind of know like oh these are halloween and as we move up here look at these colors these are clearly fall colors, right? She's kind of moving into fall and maybe Thanksgiving. I'm excited to see what she posts in the winter around Christmas time. She just does such a great job. She also does some really cool edits as well, which isn't necessary. You know, you don't have to do crazy edits for your uh, for your product photos and advertising, but I think that she balances it really well. For example, this photo here, really nice. That's so pretty. You could buy me something from here, Mr. Moore. No. I think that these are all... I like all of it. <laughs> ring you got's enough. That's true. He just he just upgraded my en engagement ring to something absolutely awesome. But... Also from Etsy. Yes. But her her photos and just the way that she really lets her, her jewelry shine. You know, mm. she, she... Nice close-up images... She doesn't overly clutter her product photos with props. And obviously, you know, she's got a huge follower account to to show for it. So Oh, we had that we had we didn't have it full screened, I don't think. We didn't? No. Okay. Oh, whatever. Don't matter. Miss Pink Coconut. No. Alright. I think she used to sell I thought she used to sell on Etsy. I wasn't able to find her Etsy shop. Um 58,000 followers. Absolutely awesome. This is somebody that I have spoken to on a few occasions. Um, she probably will have no idea that she's even being featured, but I love her branding. I absolutely love her brand aesthetic. It is one of the most cohesive brands I've ever seen. She does not stray from her color palette at all. And I think that she looks like the women that she depicts in her art. She's got a couple women that look like her and I just, I love it. I think we featured her before. We have, yeah. I love what she does. Yeah, her and, social media is really good. Yeah, and and she also does things like mugs. You can get her 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 artwork on mugs and things. Um, so she really lets her artwork shine. I don't know what all she, I know that she sells prints and I know that she sells mugs. I don't know if she sells any other products, but when you go to her page, you don't see a bunch of you know a bunch of mugs. You you don't see you, there's the like the occasional right, but it's not it's not like she's just got a bunch of mock-ups posted. She has her art being the showcase, and you just happen to get to pick what the art goes on, whether it be now I know she sells phone cases or a mug, or a print. Um, but she lets her artwork itself shine through. And she doesn't stray from that color palette. So again, another example of a brand that really knows itself, if that makes sense. This is this is one of those times when we need to start thinking like, what's my brand about? I knew you'd like that one. You know, what does what is the feeling of my brand? All right. <laughs> This is hers are so cute. Her I name her name is India. 1.6 million followers. Let's see why? Absolutely awesome. Look at all these little fellas. I don't know if she's if she sells the knitting patterns or if she sells the products. I wasn't even expecting to feature her today. There's videos. But I felt like there are videos. Stop it amazing that is the greatest thing i've ever seen 
What I love is that she, I don't know if she sells these or not, or if she just makes them for fun, but what I love is that when you follow her, you're following the story of her frogs. You're not just following a brand. You are following what her little frogs are up to. They're almost like their own little characters, you know? It's it's just so cute. Look at that is so cute. I think you just found my favorite Instagram. I love this. Let's see. Don't click off. Links Buying to the patterns. patterns. Yeah. Awesome. That and is... the cool thing about her advertising, she really only has to have like, I've seen three characters so far. So she doesn't have to continue making new ones. She's got the fox, the badger, and two different frogs. Yeah. I think. Yes. And a bat. Is that a frog? That's a bat frog. Bat frog, bat frog, bat frog. So cute, guys. She's she does it right. This is ridiculous. I knew that you'd like that. Yep. One point six million followers. All right. So the last three are brands that Mark and I are big fans of. We um other than the first one that I just haven't wanted to spend the money on. Um, but we have shopped from the other two. Uh and this is one that what I talk about this brand like you do. Yes, you do. Way too much. Kill James Patrick. How many times have I brought up this brand? Like three times this week. Have I really? Yep. <laughs> I need to just buy. I want to buy one of their one of their um, Fair Isle sweaters, either a Christmas one or a fall one. But the problem is, they're very expensive, and I would only be able to wear it for a few months. So I've been holding off. They just perfectly show the New England lifestyle. That's that's their brand and everything that they post on their account follows this lifestyle they're not a big brand they've i mean they've got less followers than the etsy shop that we just showed though they're they're not like a they are a big brand is what i'm trying to say it's a, it's a not cute clothing brand though the last thing we looked at was like a cute fun thing that right it's mostly people that aren't gonna buy what i love though is that their photos aren't just about products so for example the products in this one are the socks that they're wearing. But mm -hmm. this is the atmosphere, right? Then again, there aren't any products. But then you can subtly see the sweaters that they're wearing, right? Again, the socks that they're wearing. I just love how they execute their branding. I think that they do such a good job. Like she's holding up. What is that? What what kind of pie is that? That looks like a traditional apple pie, maybe apple, the kind where you take instead of putting the crust on top, you cut up what would be the top right. of the pie and you stick it in so they get crispy, sticking out the top like an OG apple pie. Little chips. This, I mean, th this account makes me like want to visit this area. It knows how to use Lightroom, that's for sure. There, it is just so good. And you guys have probably seen, they were, um, the guy that's skateboarding with the pump, the jack-o'-lantern on his head, drinking like the Starbucks, the, he's wearing one of their sweaters. So if you've ever seen that like TikTok video, it was one of their sweaters that he was wearing. Um, they also incorporate in dogs a lot. Yeah. This sweater is what he was wearing. They've been they've definitely been trying to replicate the whole like wearing the pumpkin on the head ever since that went viral. This. This one. Have you guys ever seen this video before? I want that sweater. But yeah, um, again, just another brand that I really enjoy to follow. I am constantly analyzing their marketing, um, trying to kind of break it down, trying to break down the the psychology of their brand. And to me, it seems like it's all about the mood. It's all about the atmosphere. And I definitely think that most of their sales likely come from their fall and holiday advertising specifically. So make sure that you follow them. Um, that way you can kind of keep up with what they're doing in the fall. That is so cute. And I don't even think that there's any products in this, are there? Uh, I don't know. No, no products. Just cute puppies. Cute. Very, very cute. It's kind of like it's got that American dream type look. You know what I mean? That's, that's how I kind of interpret their brand. All right, next brand. Um, kind of an oddball that we're throwing in the mix, but you guys will understand as soon as I explain it. Hendrix Gin, absolute favorite uh, alcohol. Me and Mr. Moore, we used to drink um, 
what's the Woodford whiskey, and we've mm. almost completely switched over when we drink. We don't drink very often, but when we do, we usually drink Hendrix. Um, Hendrix, they've really mastered their brand. They've got almost like a whimsical, steampunky kind of style. I, I don't even know how to describe it. But the thing that makes their gin stand out, Mark and I didn't like gin. We tried theirs because they advertise that it tastes like rose and cucumber. And when you have that in mind, it it, it really does. It doesn't taste like gin. It doesn't taste like a Christmas tree. No, it doesn't. Um, and we always do gin and lavender uh, lemonades. Yeah, I do a homemade lavender reduction. Yeah. But just take a look at how they have done. It almost reminds me of like the Great Gatsby, you know, it's. Yeah, I was going to say a lot of their it's not these aren't so much, but like prohibition, pre-prohibition era. Yeah. Amer Americana. Yeah, it's. Industrial era. And they add in like like this weird bobcat mm -hmm. with one eye, you know, they, they add in really whimsical elements into their marketing like. To miss me with that Flora Adora, though it's terrible. Oh yeah, it's not very. Me, good. It's not. It's not bad. It just gives me heartburn. A, a most <laughs> unusual balloon. Is that what that says? A most unusual balloon. I love it. It's just their brand is so magical to me. Their marketing is magical. It's interesting. It's weird. It's kind of different. Got some Beatles music video here. Yeah, right. And I could. And that you know what I could. I could picture I could it. See that? Yeah. Like this. That's why I said Americana. This little pug, I mean, he just fits it perfectly. Oh, it's so cute. But yeah, um, if you haven't tried it and and you do, <laughs> and you do it occasionally like a cocktail, that's amazing. Consider consider trying it next time you're out. That's I I admired their branding before I'd ever tried it, and then I think we were out to dinner once, and I tried it, and I'm like, okay, okay, I, okay, that's awesome. Let's make it at home, and then it's like, oh my god, yeah. And then we and then we fell in love, and now we buy every new little limited edition thing that they release. Is yeah, the their, their limited edition one with the black licorice was amazing. Anyway, that's enough about alcohol. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Holzkern watches. This is the last one. Um, 215,000 followers, not too shabby. They create wooden and stone watches. Mr. Moore has one of their watches and one mm -hmm. bracelet, right? Yes. That I have. Uh, I have their Lapis Lazuli yeah. bracelet. And then. Oh, I have two bracelets because you ordered me a new bracelet from them. Because uh, one came with my watch and then you ordered me a bracelet that's right. solo and it was the Lapis bracelet. And you have the Manhattan uh, bracelet. Yes. But their product photos, you know, they've actually kind of in recent years been straying from what I loved about their brand and it's getting a little bit more industrial. So. Chella, I think you're, I think you're behind when you get to this point, you might want to zip to live. Oh no. <laughs> but if we scroll down, I mean, this, this photo is so beautiful. That's pretty. This, I like the wood. I like the little wood flower in the next one. That is so pretty. Yeah. yeah. They've got the wood centers. Quite a few of these. But if we keep scrolling right about here, what I really love about their brand is that they incorporate in nature along with their products. They'll just throw in a photo of nature and it just balances so well. And I really hope that they go back to doing that because this to me is just the perfect aesthetic. Um, I agree. The ring over the juniper. I didn't know they made uh, purses. That's interesting. I didn't either. It must be a new, newer edition. Yeah. They've it's just holiday season. So I'll be looking at them soon anyway. I mean, it's, it's just so well balanced everything that they do. So Who still uses a pocket watch. A pocket watch? I don't know. Hipsters? Hmm. But overall, it looks like they go based on seasons. Because if we go up here, it kind of, it looks like it's it shifts. Get, right, fall, late summer. And then if we look here, it feels more like summer, you know, how they've done their props. So maybe they're just gaming up for the holidays and they're kind of going a different direction. But Who knows? overall, guys, um, love it. Th these are the brands that I personally think are super duper awesome. I hope that you guys have enjoyed it. Um, the first half, like I said, those were all handmade Alpha Academy students, and I would be crazy and a terrible marketer to not let you guys know that my coaching program, the Handmade Alpha Academy, will be opening December 1st through the 10th for enrollment. That's uh -huh. just the enrollment period. You can start at any time. It is a self-paced program, and you're in it for life, so take your time. Um, when you enroll with that 
or in the coaching program, you also get 12 months of E-Rank Pro. You get Christina Nicole, our photography coach that we keep talking about, her product photography essentials workshop, and you get annual access to our Alpha Holiday Boot Camp, which would normally cost you around $100 a year to, you know, join in on those. So consider checking that out if it's something you're interested in. There is a waiting list link down below, or you can go to joinhaa.com. Um, signing up for that just ensures that you get an email when we open. And if you end up having questions about that, feel free to let me know. You but can ask them now. Feel, yeah, feel free. But we've got about 30-ish minutes to hang out with you guys and answer mm -hmm. your questions. Feel free to get them in the chat, whether they be about HAA or just general marketing and Etsy and SEO questions. Um, but I did also want to point out that for everybody who asked me to create a video on the process of legal licensing, I know that we had talked about, you know, how I, uh, along with Michelle, my, she's a virtual assistant for the alphas, but she and I also run an Etsy shop together about, um, you know, popular books. We create merchandise for those books. I created a video that posted on Tuesday that will teach you about the process that we went through to legally license with those authors so that we can create those products legally. That video is the worst performing video that I have made in over a year. And that makes me it's really wild. And that, that makes me really sad because it is such a good video and it is such a profitable niche that is not um not legally tapped. Right, right. There's still so much opportunity there because the competition isn't very high. Um, it astounds me that that video, and I don't even think it has 2,000 views yet. So please right. consider checking that out um, if if you're interested in learning how to legally license products so that you, well, first and foremost, you don't get sued um, or yeah, leave your Etsy shop. But, but so that you can legally create products, you know, under maybe your favorite book series, for example, which is exactly what we do. So you guys so. are good to ask questions. Doesn't necessarily have to be about the topic at hand. It can be about Handmade Alpha Academy. You can ask us personal questions. Whatever. All right. Jump in. Uh, Candy, what do you think about the optimized prices tab on Etsy? Um, it's okay. I mean, it's all right. It's cool if you need it. I, I still am a big fan of our profit calculator over at E-Rank. Um, I mean, it's, it's a tool, right? So as long as you're not doing what Etsy often recommends that we do and price at the very bottom of the barrel, because let's face it, not everybody is searching for you know, they're not searching like for bargain bin products, right? We can't always price at the bottom. I always recommend pricing at that top 10% of your industry, whatever it may be. So just make sure that you're not taking, make sure that you're pricing for what your products are worth, okay? Just whether you use the tool or not, do it with, you know, the knowledge that it is just a tool. I love how Taylor School is text us and they text us in three parts. Yeah, and I also have a notification because FedEx is here. Oh, okay. All right, let's see. Um, <laughs> I thought the idea was great. I'm surprised. You're surprised that the idea was great? Let's see. Almost wish bookish would work for me. Yeah, don't, don't attempt to go and like create bookish themed products if it doesn't already fit your niche. It'll be really, really weird if that's just not the aesthetic of your brand, you know? What do you do with Instaphoto Cohesion when your brand colors are wildly different than the various colors that your items are? Um, stick with the colors of your brand in your backgrounds and in your props, even if the items themselves are different colors. Make sure that you are following a good consistent color palette or, or filter using a similar filter so that all of your products kind of have the same feel or all of those photos have the same feel. Just like Miranda, um, obviously with her bookmark shop, all of the props are different colors. Um, all of her bookmarks are different colors. But she's choreographed everything in a way that it all feels very cohesive. And it takes a bit of practice. I for, for our brand new shop that we just opened, I'm still trying to learn what the voice of our brand is. So let's see. Yep. Sorry, I had a sneeze. It was coming up. I couldn't talk. Uh, people talk about branding with a person in mind or a cohesive product but what about a brand feel can you talk about if aiming for a feeling is more important and how did how do you do this those go hand in hand a brand you by determining who your target audience is right 
you can more easily target what type of feeling that target customer will gravitate towards. So if you are trying to target, for example, you know, minimalist moms who, you know, maybe they go to Starbucks every morning and then they go for a jog and then they go back home and they've got this super duper clean house and they have perfectly manicured nails, then and they live a very minimalist lifestyle then you obviously want to make sure that everything that you do for your brand is also minimalist and fits almost like what would fit in their home, even if you create products that aren't home-oriented, right? You have to kind of follow the feelings of the ideal target customer that you want to appeal to. Um, just like Amanda's shop, she was very, very um, aligned with that colorful, bright, popping, bold, uh, I would say, 70s to 90s type themes and aesthetics really, really heavily in the 80s to 90s. Um, and I think that, you know, for a, we'll say maybe like a millennial, that is going to stand out to them because they're either going to say, wow, this reminds me of my childhood, or they're going to say, wow, this reminds me of, you know, maybe, maybe even like of an era that I missed out on. Maybe I was born after this particular aesthetic, but I would like to participate because I think that it looks really, really great, which is where Mark and I are with our 70s aesthetic. We we didn't get to enjoy the 70s and now we absolutely love the um, the aesthetic and, and mid-century modern mm -hmm. as well. But with that in mind- I like the hippie aesthetic a lot more though. Right, but, but you can't create those feelings and those emotions until you know what emotions are gonna draw to your ideal target customer. So you have to start <laughs> with your target customer. And, and by the way, not trying to sell you HAA, um, I do have free resources that cover this, including my brand webinar that I did with Printify on their channel. Um, but Handmade Alpha Academy, that um, brand psychology that I'm talking about and target customer identification, and then making sure that everything that you do, including your shop and your marketing, all align with those emotions that you want to create, that's like the primary foundation of Handmade Alpha Academy. So um, definitely something to consider if that's not something that you know how to do. But a good start for you is to think about who you want to appeal to because having that target customer will make everything else feel a lot more natural because you already know who they are and what they value and, and what's important and what's going to appeal to them. Uh, I already get it. That okay, one. I was making sure. Uh, I want to consider hiring again in the future, but my main issue is the people I've hired in the past have not been able to handle messages. They always end up rude uh, from overwhelm. I mean, you have to figure out how to vet people. Um, there's not really any way that you can tell somebody's going to be good at what they do. Uh, look for somebody with a history in doing customer support. Right. Strict guidelines and swipe files. If If you can create swipe files that serve as the brand of your voice for commonly asked questions... Um, that's a good place to start. But the moment, I mean, you have to kind of stand, especially at the beginning, you have to monitor their communication and make sure that it aligns with how you would speak as the representative of your brand. Because yeah, make sure they can handle your brand image. Right. Because if they start speaking out of tone with, you know, how you would handle these customers, that reflects badly on you, right? As as the brand and as the owner of the business, because the customer doesn't know who they're talking to. They think that they, they're talking to you. So um, I think that just being strict and not and, you know, be professional. Sometimes friends aren't the best people to hire. We're very lucky or lucky to have Michelle. Um, who she helps with some of our brand communication, but she knows me because she knows how I talk and she writes for a living. So, you know, don't feel like you can't communicate your professional needs, especially yeah. when you hire, for real. when you hire a friend, don't be afraid to, you know, to say, this is not the type of language that I would typically use. We need to work together to increase the positivity in the tone when communicating with customers. And after so many warnings, well, you might have to let that person go. So, and if it's a new person that you're hiring, point it out. Say, in the past uh, with hiring, I've had trouble with past employees doing this. Um, so in the future, what we need to focus on, our, our focus, our primary focus and our core values of my brand is to always, you know, be positive, even when the customer is not being 
the most positive person. I'm sorry. Am I shaking the desk? Yes. I'm like, uh, what do you think about me tagging on smash? I don't know what that is. Uh, Instagram. I'm assuming mm. she meant a uh, Jewish yeah. account that features Jewish artists. You could. Why not? Yeah. Um, I mean, I th tagging, I don't think unless the account. So for example, I always target or I always tag the authors of the books that I'm licensed by. Um, I, they don't ever see them, you know, they're, they're a very big account. So I'm sure that they don't see where I've tagged them. Um, I haven't seen any like positive come out of it. I haven't seen any negative come out of it. I don't see any harm coming out of it. Um, make sure that you also engage with that brand or that page as well, though. Don't just tag them in marketing. Um, I know you guys will, I've got a ton of you that will tag me in your marketing and I don't care. You guys can tag me. I'm probably not going to look at it. <laughs> I, I get like, you know, tons of tags where you've tagged me in reels and things. And I know that it's not actually about me. It's not like you're asking me a question. So I just kind of ignore it. So. What or how to know what is the 10% of the industry? Top 10%. So, so um, do we still have. No, you've closed I've it out. Closed everything. Yeah. So the way that I personally do it is I go to erank.com and I go into the keyword tool. And I type in a keyword associated with my product and, and the core of like what it is. If, if I'm selling a, I don't know, maybe I'm selling this, this skinny tumbler, um, then I would go in and I would search for what I sell. And then I would go, there are different tabs now within the keyword tool. We've recently revamped it. One of the tabs, I can't remember exactly what the label of the tab is because it's a new, a new feature that we added but there are little tabs. There's a tab that's going to show you common price points for similar items. Look at those common price points and find the highest, right? Find whatever that high price point is. And that's typically where you're going to want to price your product. You want That's what pricing in that top 10% means. You know, you want to, and that's an easy way to do it. That's like, if you don't want to sit and, you know, math super hard by analyzing all of your competitors and looking at what they're all charging and then, you know, trying to find some average area, I would just recommend trying to price around whatever that high point is that you see within the keyword tool for products that are similar. Uh, what is a good average search volume? Basically, at what point is a search volume considered too small? Um, unfortunately, <clears throat> there's no answer to that because it's going to depend completely based on your industry. There, There is no daily average search volume. There's no, I mean, if you sell um, $10,000 engagement rings, one you know, one customer is going to be life changing, right? If you sell 10 <clears throat> cent stickers, well, uh, you're probably going to need more views to, you know, feel good about yourself, right? Um, so there's unfortunately when it comes to anything like what is a good average for blank, no matter what that question is, whether it be sales, traffic, what's a good average for, you know, likes on my products, what's there, there's just no answers to any of those questions. Um, <clears throat> better than you were yesterday. That's what I always say. You need to size yourself up next to yourself because you are your only competitor when it comes to, you know, setting benchmarks like that. Always aim to do a little better and maybe not day by day because some days are just slow, but month by month, year by year, what you should see is a, at least a small incline, yes. hopefully a big incline, but up, not down. Exactly. <clears throat> Even steady. Even steady, but never down. Uh, aren't they in HAA? Yeah. Do you recommend MailChimp for email marketing? A huge Michael? chunk of HAA is is on using MailChimp for marketing. Michael, Michael, what what you doing? Go into uh, Handmade Alpha Academy Module Five to start. We have a secret link in Module Five that will give you a. Uh, a paid automation feature that you would normally have to have a paid account for, but MailChimp has graced us with a magic link. Um, and then we resume MailChimp content again in module eight. But yeah, go back to module five. I have questions about HAA. When exactly does it start? Is everything online? I'm a mother of three. It's all online, all accessible from the moment that you sign up until you're done. Yes. With it. So, Handmade Alpha Academy, it is pre recorded, digestible content broken down into step-by-step -step mm -hmm. modules 
that you can log into and do whenever you want. Yep. We have we have some students who have been in for years and life gets busy. They have babies, they move, they get married, they got to set it down for a couple months. That's exactly why I laid it out the way that I did because I know that us all getting together, you know, every Wednesday at 9 a.m. for a special Zoom call, no, nobody has time for that. I don't have time for that. Handmade Alpha Academy is everything that I know about business <clears throat> compiled into a curriculum that I built. I was a teacher before I ever started selling on Etsy. And everything that I learned during that time about curriculum building and also making sure that we are um, appealing to a neurodiverse audience by making sure that we're hitting all of the areas of learning, making sure that we're hitting auditory learners, we're hitting visual learners, we're hitting those who learn by example. And we try to incorporate that into every single module yep. of the program. Um, so to answer your question, you can take it and do it whenever you want, starting on the date that you enroll you get to pick. Um, because we're opening from December 1st through the 10th for enrollment, a lot of the students who join will typically join during the window, but then they'll wait till January 1st because, you know, I know how the holidays are. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, so, and and that's totally fine. If, if you're one of those like new year, new me people and you would rather start, you know, your classes January 1st. Go for it. Totally up to you. I think the licensing thing could also work for other niches, like a smaller band. I thought about asking one if I could design a product around a certain song. I'm going to yeah. be honest with you. When it comes to to band stuff, the problem with that is that bands make 99% of their money off of merch now. That so, is true. However... I'm not going to say that it's a bad idea and that you definitely shouldn't ask, but I would, I would not be upset if they say no, because that's where bands get most of their money. It does not pay to play music especially as a smaller band anymore i've yeah. played shows with like several hundred people in the crowd and still only walked away with like 50 bucks from the actual event but then seven or eight hundred dollars from merch sales yeah your last so, merch your last merch table we we almost fifteen hundred dollars yeah yeah and almost nothing from the, i think we made on that one was like 200 and from the from the show but that was a completely literally like capacity venue now one thing i will say is that for artists um one of my, my favorite band bayside i've got their their bird tattooed on my arm um they I, i'm in one of their facebook groups and they actually um they have random artists who will contact them with awesome art that they've done oh yeah and they'll actually you know utilize their art on shirts and things yeah. so that that might be an option uh, as a newbie to Instagram, do you think I'm weird that that got through? Uh, do you think that it would be okay to post only reels for a while while I earn some followers? I mean, you could, it kind of makes a feel or the feel, the, the feed look a little weird. What I would do is if, if you plan to only post reels, customize your thumbnails. Um, instead of just doing reels, why not, why not do one reel and one post a day? Kind of balance it a little better. You know what I mean? That way you can kind of hit the nurturing aspect, which is going to be your post and the reels element. Reels are great for growth. Carousels, though, I've been seeing some really crazy numbers on my carousels in terms of engagement. So yeah. I think in terms of nurturing your audience and actually connecting with the ex existing audience that you have, carousels have been where it's at for me. So I might bounce between the two, do a carousel, then a reel, then a carousel, then a reel. That way you're both nurturing and you're also providing that bit of outreach. Um, and again, down below, I've got my 30-day Instagram challenge kit. It's totally free. You guys can sign up for that. And that gives you a full calendar of what you should post each day based on how um, Instagram's algorithm kind of likes to see things. I like drawing animals and I think making small stickers with sticker mule could be fun, okay. but I also have four digital downloads for prints in my shop. Is that a bad combo? It's not about what the items are. Think less about the physical or in this case, not physical because it's print, but think less about what the item is and more about who the target customer is. How do I don't know. You have just said that little animals drawing animals and digital downloads are the digital downloads also of animals. Because if so, then it feels like it all fits to me because it is the same consistent thing. It's never about what you sell. I, I'm never like, only sell t-shirts, only sell mugs. It's about what's on the shirt and on the mug. It's about what is on the sticker and what's, you know, what's on the digital download 
that really, really matters. Um, and, and that all, again, ties into your target customer and, and um, how that collection of items is going to really speak to them on an emotional level. Mabel said, just want to thank you for featuring us. Uh, we have zero branding before HAA and still working hard on it. We appreciate your feedback and HAA so much. Love it. Thank you very much. I was so focused on what you were listening to, what you were saying, that I just cut a greeting card in half instead of trimming oh, it. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, th that's not even the first one. Somebody else said that they liked the, the stream so much that they forgot that they had dinner in the oven and they, <laughs> they overcooked their we dinner. Need, we should do hashtag Friday Bean Disasters. That and, would be funny. And anytime you guys have a disaster, do hashtag Friday Bean Disasters so Mark and I can see it. <laughs> yeah, if it happens during the bean. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, with a replay, whatever. For sure. Uh, do, 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 do. Go away. There we go. Ideas for recycling mock-ups for multiple listings without making it look like a copy and paste. Take those lists or take those mock-ups into Canva. Remove the background. Add your own. I, I, I that's what I do. Um, get creative with it. Play around with those mock-ups. Don't just post the same, especially if there are competitors who are using the exact same mock-ups. Have a little bit of fun with it. And you, the, the first ones will probably look really crappy. Um, my first ones looked pretty crappy, but I made it a point to learn how to get better. I started incorporating in shadows and I started incorporating in more, you know, little, little items and things that would, um, you know, I could make my own little flat lays, um, but just get creative with it and take some time to look at what some of your competitors are also doing. And I'm not talking about the ones who are just using the exact same mock-ups that you are, but I've seen some really, really creative ideas done with mock-ups. Um, we've got a couple in our own Etsy shop as well over at Books and Cold Brew. We just opened and I think we hit uh, nine sales today. Cool. 10 sales, 10, 10, Good I think. Stuff. I know we just opened. I'm so happy. Wait till they shut your shop down. They better not. <laughs> That's what they do. That's what they do. They uh, just wanted to say, uh, Miranda. Oh. Also wanted to say thank you for HA and everything. I uh, keep thinking my sales are slow. My sales are up twenty percent from last year, and I'm just not overwhelmed like previous years. Maybe that's a good that's thing. Awesome. That's was... a good thing. Uh, can you link your Etsy shop to TikTok? I'm actually not sure. You can have a if you I have over so. if you've got over a thousand followers on TikTok, you can have a link in your bio. Um, but I'm not sure. I knew that you have like the TikTok shop feature. I'm just probably not the person to ask. There's probably a YouTuber who specializes in TikTok that would be a better, a better person to ask. Mabel said she got a t-shirt from Cold Bruce yesterday and it looks good. Awesome. Uh, sure you better leave a review. <laughs> I'm a new shop that's been open for a month. I have people favoriting some of my items, but haven't seen the conversion yet. Any suggestions? It's really kind of hard to say specifically without actually seeing it. Yeah. Fortunately. Yeah, we we don't I mean, here's the thing. Favorites aren't a metric that I would use for to determine any level of nope. success. However, what those favorites tell you is that people are finding your items. Yeah, they're seeing it. Yes, they are discovering them. So maybe they're just not ready to buy, maybe they're just browsing, you know, maybe maybe they're thinking about holiday shopping, but they're they're not ready to purchase yet. Maybe they're waiting for Cyber Week to do their purchasing. Um, just know that if you're getting those favorites, it means that your SEO is clearly helping you because people are discovering your items. Um, I would be patient for a little while. You just opened, you know, give it a little bit more time. You're, a brand new shop likely isn't going to make a million dollars during the holiday season. Let's be real. It, it takes a lot of time for a shop to gain success. Use this time to kind of look at the data. Use Etsy's busy season this year to look at what's getting the most favorites, if that's all you're getting, if you're not making any sales, um, and, and what's not getting favorites, and analyze some competitors and try to determine maybe it's your thumbnails. Could you be using, you know, photos that just aren't appealing to your audience? If you've got a listing that's getting tons of favorites, but no sales, I would maybe try to tweak your photos a little bit and, and see if maybe you could, um, you know, increase interest in that product. There's, there's so many little fun tests and experiments that you can run. Uh, are there worksheets or templates as a part of HA? Um, yeah. There are lots of things that you can print out. Um, there are 
swipe files where you can, you know, download PDFs and copy and paste things to make, you know, parts of running your shop a little easier. Um, but it's not like a big template course. That's not what it is. You are taking actions. Um, now the boot camps that you get access to, they do have lots of templates. Um, and HAA students, you get perpetual access to those uh, boot camps. So you can always go back and grab them. But it's not like a, it's it's not like a big like template type. I know that there are courses out there that give you like a bunch of cool marketing templates and stuff, but that's really, we keep that for the holiday boot camp. I do teach you a lot about how to create your marketing photos and things though. Tina said, I've been implementing HA lessons into my illustration website. It's much more personable now. Before it was super cold, HA is more than just Etsy. I'm so grateful I had that pandemic check. It's almost like we could take and adapt HAA into a course about websites. I know, I'll do it eventually. Oh man. I'll do it eventually. It's almost like we could do that. I keep thinking about it. I keep thinking about it. About the 10% you referred to the graph vertical or the price range in the graph horizontal. The price range in the graph. It'll yeah, be dog. these these lines going up and down unless something's changed in the last like day and I haven't noticed it. Can you find those high price points. Can confirm HA is great to watch. No weird audio or dull bits or annoying <laughs> colors. We try. We, we really do try. We try to keep it very sensory friendly. That's mm -hmm. why we buy very expensive cameras and microphones. Good God. I know. I'm Every hungry. time we get to the end of the stream, like 10 minutes in, her stomach is just... I know. I'm hungry. I'm starving. It's okay. Sounds like a velociraptor. Uh, Brock Johnson said to try not adding your reel to your feed to reach more non-viewers. I tried it and got three times the reach. I did that and I didn't get any views. Straight zero. I ended up deleting that reel and reposting it and it did awesome. I don't know why. Maybe I'll try it again. I saw the same thing and I was like, ooh, Brock. Brock found something cool. For anybody who doesn't know Brock Johnson, he is a... He's the leader of the Earth Pokemon gym. <laughs> now I'm never going to be able to see... No, not, not that Brock. Brock Johnson is a phenomenal Instagram coach that, um, that I follow. You can follow him on Instagram. That's where he posts his Instagram advice. Um, but yeah, he posted that and I was immediately like, Ooh, I'm going to test it. I'm going to test it. And, yeah. yeah and it's, <laughs> it was comically bad. It was comically bad. Yeah. Um, but maybe I'll try it again. Maybe it was just me. Should reels, carousels and stories posted on the same day be the same topic? No, they don't have to be. They don't have to be. They're, it be, doesn't really matter. Honestly, they're going to be seen by different audiences <laughs> at different times. Like that's just the nature of them. Stories are going to be seen that day, right? Only by people who are paying attention to them. Feed posts could be seen any time that week, uh, depending on who, how well your reel does. It could be seen all month, you know. So I wouldn't focus too much on that unless you want to. I have a random thing in my shop that doesn't fit into my animal art, but it's sold like my first ever sale. Can I keep it in my animal shop? It's human hands posing with nail art. Um, You can do whatever you want. If it's selling, then I would leave it. If it's had a sale before and it was your first sale and you're leaving it for sentimental reasons, don't feel obligated. But you don't have to remove anything from your shop. It's just about getting... You want to make sure that you are getting your brand every day one step closer to it, it to the emotions that you want to create. And it's almost like having a rose bush where every once in a while, you know, you'll be right up close to your rose bush and you'll be, you know, looking at your roses, but then you got to kind of take a step back and look at the full rose bush all together and say, oh, okay, we need to prune right here and we need to trim, you know, there's a little wild branch that's sticking out. We need to trim that off. Sometimes you have to do that with your own brand where you're like, mm, I'm adding all these things in, but maybe this little thing here doesn't fit and it's not getting traction. So we'll snip that. Uh, thank you. I've heard that you should close after two months if no sales. I appreciate the good. That's really weird advice. That, I don't know where you got that from, but that's really weird advice. Can, I've, I mean, my, I guess if you went off like, I don't know, never mind. I can't, I can't. I can't think of a reason why that would be the case. I mean, they do, but they all they all just sound during, stupid. During the summer, sales are slow, so that is some people don't get sales for three or four months out of the year, and then get an explosion in the in the winter. And not to mention, okay, here's what I want you to do. Okay, first of all, brain dump that. Okay, just yeah, brain dump that. Brain dump that. 
Go down below into the, you know, below the video, expand it out, expand out the description. My free Etsy SEO toolbox is in there. Get that again, totally free. It's probably one of the best like free little mini course things that I have. The very first video in that is called the science of Etsy success. And it will cover exactly how Etsy's algorithm works. And you'll realize why that whole, you know, the whole after two months close is completely nonsensical because it can take Etsy's algorithm 60 to 90 days to even assign those brand new listings a listing quality score so that they know where they should even sit and search. Two months is an absolutely ridiculous uh, benchmark to try to reach some point of success. So um, be smarter than the dum-dums who are giving you bad advice. Learn how the algorithm actually works. That way you can plan strategically around it so that you're hitting all of the points that Etsy's algorithm considers when it comes to ranking those items in search so that they can hopefully be seen by more shoppers. Should you make more of the products that have uh, favorites? I mean, you can. Um, Again, I, favorites aren't a great metric for knowing what people actually like. I mean, I would focus more on the sales. You know what I mean? Yeah. And if you are only getting favorites, obviously, it's kind of like taking shots in the dark. Um, that's where I would focus a little bit more on the marketing element and less on the design element. Now, obviously, if you've got holidays coming up and you're working on things like get stuff listed. But um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of using favorites as any major metric. Oh, yeah. Miranda said it's that person's advice how, how am i not surprised uh chicken tenders and mac and cheese in the oven champ mm. for putting your mac and cheese in the oven it's the only place you should cook mac and cheese uh bonus points if you did it with a roux uh is haa better for people who already have an etsy shop i haven't actually started mine yet i'm still creating prototypes you are best case scenario we i, I think a lot of the best case scenario would be to watch through it once and then go through it again and implement and it as you as you start. If right. I if I were to do it from from an outside perspective, that's probably how I would do it. Here's the thing: those who already have their shops set up, because we really break down the psychology of your brand and identifying your target customer, and and you know things that most businesses should do before they start a business. But most of us, when we start an Etsy shop, it's like, oh, I've got a good idea. I'm going to start selling it. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't, we don't think about all that other stuff and the SEO and all, mm -hmm. we don't think about all that till later. So what most sellers have to do when they join HAA is they got to do a little bit of reanalysis and they have to rewire things and they have to, you know, kind of they'll start going through things and they'll be like, oh, I just realized that my branding does not create the feelings that I want to appeal to. Yeah. And they have to deconstruct things. You, having no shop yet, you get to kind of have that running start where rather than having to backtrack, you are launching with the knowledge already in your head and the motivation there. So um, yeah, I, I dare say that sellers who are starting from scratch are able to move a lot faster. Yeah, but I don't want that to discourage people who already have an existing Etsy shop you still get just as much out of it. I think it's just easier for people who haven't started their shop yet. Oh yeah. Because I mean, you know, if you're ready to, if you know that there's a problem with your, with your brand because mm -hmm. you're not making sales, then obviously you, you should plan to deconstruct some things that might not be working. Right. How can I get a copy of Starless sci-fi book? Uh, best place to get it. IMO is Amazon. You just hop on Amazon and search the channel Starla Moore, and it should be the first thing that pops up. Yeah, it's Should it's every prime. it's everywhere though. Barnes and Noble, Walmart.com. You can get it anywhere. But Amazon though, I want them Amazon reviews because not yeah, enough. Slap a review on there. Not enough of my sales are on Amazon. Please be nice. I'll cry if not. It's my it's my first book. Be nice. This book sucks. It's great. Uh, <laughs> Motivate me and maybe I'll find time to finish the second one. I, I'm planning to do that. Yes to everything Mark said about mac and cheese. That's like one of my one of my chief dishes that I make for the holidays. What, your $100 mac and cheese? It's not really $100. You call it that. How much is it? It is I'd, probably 40, 50 bucks. 40, 50 bucks for your mac and cheese, though. That's yeah, still... but it's all like freshly made noodles and like aged cheeses and... I do uh, truffle and and black garlic and stuff for the topping, and I go I go crazy on my mac and cheese, dude. Leave me alone. Uh, I started the Renaissance Rider and built it up step by step through HA while fixing my current Riverwood Forest shop. And after HA was done, I opened a third shop, fields and stuff. Fields of fluff. 
Fields of fluff. Fields and stuff. Fields and stuff. <laughs> That's it's the end of it. I'm tired, guys. Miranda said I already had twenty thousand sales when I joined. We've yeah. had, and then we've had people who don't even know what they're going to make yeah, when they join. We've, we've had everything from the most basic of basic to the most advanced of advanced. We even had a guy who sold mugs for men. If you remember him, he was on Derek. here. He's now, I think he sells defense contracts to the for the DOD. And he used HAA to design his company around. That. It's, I th you can use it for whatever you want. Uh, I don't know. We don't want to advertise the bad guys and scamming new sellers with crap advice, but I always want to hear who dumb dumb is so I can just see <laughs> how bad they are. So there's something weirdly satisfying about that, huh? Uh, for POD focusing on t-shirt and hoodies and sweaters, how can you think about branding? Okay. So backtrack here. T-shirts and hoodies is not a niche. No, it's a product. That's an industry. It's a physical item that you put a brand on. So what you need to do this is keep in mind, Printify, when they need somebody to talk about niches, there's a reason I've been on their channel like what collectively with the podcast and everything. I've been on their channel like six times and they still and we're working together on future prod, prod, projects as well. Don't think so much about what you are printing on. That doesn't matter. Think about what you are printing on it. And focus on building that niche. Now, if you go over to Printify's, uh, even if you use a different POD service, if you go to Printify's YouTube channel, you'll find several different um, webinars and workshops that I've done with them over there. Just go to their channel and search Starla Moore. Um, but what you should be focusing on is first defining your niche, right? What are, what are you making and who are you making it for? So are you making products for Chihuahua owners? Okay, cool. What does a Chihuahua owner look like and what type of Chihuahua owner are you trying to appeal to? Maybe you're appealing to super tough biker dads who also own Chihuahuas. You know, maybe you're you're appealing to that niche where you, most people think of like Paris Hilton when they think of Chihuahuas, but you're appealing to like the tough guys who also have cute little dogs that they carry in their motorcycle little basket. Um, maybe that's your niche, right? Then it doesn't matter what you make. It doesn't matter that you make shirts. It doesn't matter that you make hoodies. Your target audience is going to buy whatever you make on whatever you print it on because they're passionate about that, okay? So that step one. Step two is to make your branding match up with that. You know, make sure that if you miss the beginning of the, uh, the stream, you go back and watch some of the brands that we showcased. But your branding should focus on the emotions that you want to create inside that target customer when they see your brand. I've got a great branding webinar over on Printify's channel as well. Um, highly recommend checking that out because we talk about all of these things and establishing your brand's your brand's planet or basically the universe that exists around your brand and all of the things that will make your brand cohesive. Um, but again, I know that there are a lot of YouTubers who are like, make everything. You have to make as much as you can. Follow all the trends. There is a reason that they are successful and very few of their followers are. Um, there is a reason that Printify has me come talk about these things with their followers. Yep. There is a reason why you can go to E-Rank's top 100 most successful Etsy shops over in the top sellers report and see that all of those 100 have a niche and there are, none of them are POD general stores. Mm -hmm. They're the POD shops are ones that have niches. So people can, you know, there's YouTubers that will argue with me until they're blue in the face. You can argue all they want. That's fine. But I the, love to argue. The proof is in the pudding. So make sure that you are finding the very best pudding, right? Make sure that you are finding a niche that you love, that you're passionate about, that you have some knowledge in that makes you happy. You know, I'm doing POD and I'm doing products. I'm getting officially licensed by authors for books that I love to read. So I already know, I know all the cool little lingo and all the fun quotes associated. And mm -hmm. I know these characters like they're my best friends. And because of that, I can create products around them. Um, so yeah, I hope that that helps. But the answer to what the best pudding is, by the way, is pistachio. Pistachio really? is the best pudding. Yes, pistachio is absolutely the best pudding. We're done with questions. We're way over time here. I'm so hungry. Tina said I could eat black garlic all dang long, all day long. All dang day. All dang day. Yep, that's what she said. <laughs> uh, check out Regalis, R-E-G-A-L-I-S. You can get black garlic by like multiple pounds. I think a pound is like 12 or 14 bucks. It's not bad for what it is. It's good stuff. They also have like fancy vegetables and things that you can't get in the United States. We're not answering any more questions, so you can stop. Oh, uh, I was just, I'm reading. Um, 
but they've got a lot of really cool stuff. They they specialize in meats, but it is a five star restaurant. Oh, you make it in the air fryer. Then that's that's close to real black gar. Like theirs is made the real like six, seven week way. Anyway, that's enough about food. We love you guys. Happy Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Day. Make sure you check out the video she did this week. Uh, another video next Tuesday. And we'll see you guys next Friday. Are we going to be streaming the day after Thanksgiving? Yeah, I was going to. Black Friday. Okay. I figured. Will you guys be here Black Friday? We'll be here if you will. Um, and guys, Handmade Alpha Academy. Again, it opens December 1st through the 10th. If you want to learn more about it, link down below. Um, enrollment is $997, $997, not $9.97, or you can join our six-month payment plan at $199 one. a month for six months, unless you pay it off before March 1st, and then I will take the final payment off. And that is a lifetime membership, and you get all the goodies that I add to it in the future. Um, HAA students will be the first to tell you that I'm always adding something cool in there. Every, every enrollment period, I try to get something new in there. Um... Yeah, but guys, thanks so much for hanging out, and we will see you next week. Enjoy your weekend. Be safe. Bye-bye. Love you. Bye-bye. Keep now waving. I, now I want black garlic. <laughs> mm, I'm going to order some. Will you? Mm-hmm. we got Thanksgiving next week. I Ooh, have to. You're right.